Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the ideas and terminology of object learning programming. Um, now let's dive into the editor and use it to start drawing and animating objects on the screen. Um, we're not gonna go over any of the terminology so much anymore. Um, so if you haven't checked out the last video, that's a good place to get kind of an overview of what we're gonna be talking about. Um, so, you know, we can do and we will do some really cool, exciting stuff, I promise. But before we, you know, start doing that, let's make something really simple um, that lets us kind of combine all of these ideas into something that we can see on the screen. And in this case, I think I, what I want to make is a square class. Yeah, I know it's not that exciting, but I promise we'll get there. We really will. Um, so we've got our class, it's named square. Again, Reminder. reminder this should be capitalized. We've got our constructor. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna send no arguments in. I don't think it needs it. And I know I wanna have a width, um, an, an X position, a Y position. I think that's it. So um, I'm gonna say this.x. I'm gonna start all my squares at 10 and we're gonna make them uh, kind of like grow and expand. So the width is gonna, oh, sorry, not X, this should be, uh, width and let's do this dot x equals random between zero and the width of the screen this dot y same thing super simple um, and then I know I'm going to want a couple of different methods for this but for now just so we can test it and I think this is a really good idea especially with object-oriented programming where we start building lots of abstract stuff make a really simple version test it, make sure it works before you move on. Um, so I definitely want to have a display method. And um, this is where I, one of the places where object-oriented programming is really powerful. I can um, define this display in a really simple place and then my draw becomes super clean and we'll see how this works. So I'm going to do rec mode center, fill, let's just do a semi-transparent um, white and then square. And then remember, when we access variables, we need to use this. So this.x, this.y, and this.width. Super easy. That's my whole class. We're going to add one more thing in a minute. Then we need to create an instance of our, of our square. So I'm going to call this um, s. And it's a global variable, because I need to be able to access it in setup and in draw. Then in setup, I can say s equals new square. There's no arguments because it's just giving it um, the same size in a random position on the screen. And then in my draw, I can say s dot display. Super easy. Let's make sure this works before we move on. And oh, let me make that background a little darker. There we go. So now you can see that's the little 10 pixel square. If I run it again, it goes in a new spot all over the screen. Super cool. Um, we can make another square. And again, this is really the power of object-oriented programming. Um, I can define this template and I can so easily create another square. And all I have to do is this. And we'll see in upcoming examples how we can make a list and use a for loop to handle all of this stuff, which is even cooler. Okay. so. Fun, I guess, it's drawing some random squares. Let's add one more method, one more function here. I'm gonna call this update. Um, oh, and you might be tempted to call this draw, um, and it probably would work, but I think it's confusing because we have our regular draw loop over here. Um, so I call it display, and you'll see this in lots of P5.js and processing examples called display. So for update, I wanna make this square grow in size um, until it reaches a certain size and then I want it to stop. So I can say this.w, now you could add to it. Um, I'm gonna make it 1% bigger. So I'm gonna multiply it by one, which will be the same size. 1.01 .01 will be 1% bigger. And if we run this, Actually, we'll see nothing happen. And the reason is that we haven't called this update function. Remember over here, we called display. And so we got to see it, but we never ran that function. So instead, 
Um, we, sorry, I have this cat coming over here who really wants to say hi. Not sure if you can see him. Um, we want to say s.update another.update. And now they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and eventually they're going to get super huge. I want them to stop when they reach a certain size. So I'm going to go back to my update function here and I'm going to say if this dot width is greater than, let's say height divided by two, this dot width equals height divided by two. So basically it'll just stop when it gets to that size. And now they get bigger, pretty cool, and then they quit. If I run this again, there'll be a new random locations. In this case, they'll overlap. And um, sorry, this is turning into a cat highway over here. Um, and that's it, super simple. We've got our constructor, our um, methods, the parameters, our variables that go with our class. And you can see how we can um, apply this idea for drawing stuff in P5.js. In the next few examples, we'll do something that's more exciting, more fun, things moving around the screen and all that stuff.